Hi, this is Steve Pegram at Sorrento Networks here again for another episode of the webcast on DWDM fibre and how to use it. And this time I shall be getting a little bit more into that technology and more in towards the uh, WDM technology itself. So, as we saw last time, an optical fibre is like a pipe um, so that signals going in, optical signals going in at one end are coming out at the other end and that gives the classic pinpoints of light picture that we see in the in the image here and in so many others besides every time you look up at anything to do with fibre. And we also saw that this is related to the old-fashioned Aldis lamp um, where light is basically flashed on and off uh, to signal Morse code between ships, that's through the air in the old days and even today now and again. But uh, obviously in a ca fibre cable the light is um, transmitted using a flashing light that uh, emerges at the other end but now it's inside the fibre so that means it can carry around corners and over very very long distances unlike oldest lamps. And we also saw that uh, optical fibre cables are extremely dense and they can carry huge amounts of capacity. Now they're much smaller than uh, copper cables and they can go much much further. But coming on to the WDM technology, or indeed DWDM technology, um, the, the, uh, the, the picture becomes a little bit more complicated in that, whereas previously we were thinking about a simple light flashing on and off, now we're talking about a coloured light flashing on and off. So taking the analogy here, it's like those guys with those uh, oldest lamps. Now they're using a, a different coloured torches, which they're flashing on and off. And uh, they're, they're actually um, different different guys wearing different coloured uh, sunglasses, if you will. So now we've got four different guys. One's got a red torch, orange, green, blue. And their opposite number on the other ship, as it were, are wearing uh, different coloured sunglasses. So the, the, the red guy can only see the red signals. The orange can only see the orange. Blue, blue can see blue, etc. And the same <coughs> in the opposite direction. So that is uh, the principle of wavelength division multiplexing. So in, in this very simple example, we have now four separate signals going over the same fibre at the same time. And this, of course, is very much unlike what you can achieve with a copper cable. Of course, in reality, we don't actually use torches and we don't use men. We use electronics. Uh, the transmitters are lasers and the receivers are usually photodiodes, they're controlled by electronics, but aside from that the principle is exactly the same. S and in fact uh, all these colours are in the infrared, that means you can't actually see them with a human eye, so bear with me on the analogy for a little bit longer. So the red the red signal goes to the red receiver, the green signal goes to the green receiver, etc, etc, um, and it is as if there's actually f in this simple example four separate fibers in each direction that's very important and in reality in very uh, common uh, DWDM systems there may be uh, of at least 40 uh, colors available to be used as I say they they're all in the infrared but uh, they they easily 40 often there's 80 uh, you may now and again hear about something called CWDM which is coarse WDM uh, in which the numbers of wavelengths is actually reduced to maybe four or eight. So this kind of uh, matches the pictures here. But the uh, recent developments in electronics means that there's very little difference in cost between CWDM and DWDM, so I'm going to ignore that uh, for the purposes of the rest of this uh, slide deck because um, the, there's no real reason to use CWDM. Uh, due to the lack of any cost advantages in doing so. So WDM, <coughs> it's as if you've got many, many fibres inside the fibre, the actual physical fibre, and they're completely independent of each other. So this makes the, for the picture here, which if anyone's ever seen any DWDM uh, diagrams, you often see this sort of... Uh, this picture here, so we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet um, being combined onto a one fibre. The combiner is this green block here, which is uh, a prism, if you like, combining all the colours together. 
and at the other end you have another prism, as it were, that splits them all apart again. So here we go, red comes into the fibre and then comes out at the red connection, orange goes into the fibre and comes out the orange, purple goes into the fibre, comes out of purple, and so on. And reality, the devices are looking like these devices here, which are approximately 10 by 2 centimetres, um, uh, or, or thereabouts, <coughs> and here you can actually see the optical fibre connectors where you have the the main fibre connector here, so it is on this one here and on this one here, and the individual colours are all these ones here, so it's matching the analogy fairly well, although I do say I've only got seven colours here and eight colours here, but maybe that's, uh, maybe that's okay for the point of view of a, a, an explanation at this level. So, what does WDM do for fibre capacity? Well, as I've said a moment ago, there's at least 40 wavelengths available in DWDM, and they are uh, independent of each other. Typically, uh, in terms of the equipment which is connected up, you may get uh, devices which bring out 2, 4, 8, 16, 40. There's various different numbers of channels you can actually get hold of, uh, depending on how many you need, really. Um, so that multiplies the capacity of the fiber. So each color can independently carry an optical fiber protocol of any type as if it was an independent fiber. So clearly this increases the overall capacity of that fiber by 40 or 80 times. And this can obviously be done in terms of simple multipliers. So it could be 40 times 10G, for example. That would be 400G or 80 times 100G, this is gigabits by the way, um, which would be 8000G or gigabits, or it could be a much lower capacity, 16 times 1G, which would be 16G, you get the picture. This is starting to become a little bit more interesting when you consider that you can also do combinations, so we could have 10 times 10G plus 10 times 1G, we give you an odd rate of 110G, or 8 times um, 8G plus 1G plus 10G, that would be 19. Of course, it's starting to represent some different protocols here, such as fiber channel, SDH, or some low-speed comms, as well as the ubiquitous Ethernet, which is found pretty much everywhere. So the point to make here is that although the DWDM is perhaps best known for uh, providing extra capacity on a fiber, it actually provides not only that, but also flexibility in terms of what you can actually do on that fiber with different uh, protocols running at the same time um, across the same point-to-point -point connection. So that means uh, you can treat the thing as if it is actually a number of separate fibers um, even though there's only one actual physical fiber in place. So that uh, creates improvements not only in capacity but flexibility and indeed saving fiber where you have pinch points in the duct or in the riser in the building. So there's uh, many ways in which that can play a part. And uh, this gives rise to the next, perhaps less known uh, aspect of the DWDM te technology, which is the concept of the OADM. Now the OADM is actually only a very uh, slightly different device to the, uh, the multiplexer, which I showed in, in, in this slide. But in this case, instead of uh, having ports on each side, um, one facing the physical fibre and one facing the the client side, you now have two line sides, as, as they're called. So the physical fibre is plugged in on on one side of the of the box and also on the other side of the box, whereas the drop channels, as we call them, the client channels, are dropped out locally. So that means that red whistles straight through to the next building, orange goes straight through from A to B um, without uh, bothering to stop off in this place in between, whereas purple and pink in this example are indeed dropped. So that means we can start to do some interesting things um, in the optical layer without having to bother to use electronics at all. So you might have been using a, 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 an Ethernet switch to do this type of task, but here we have what is essentially a piece of glass that does the same job. Now I think that should be very interesting to a lot of people, 
because of course um, there's virtually zero power involved. Uh, it's very very compact. Um, there's no configuration required, and um, the flexibility, the, the isolation and flexibility is assured. So that means we can build distribution networks that uh, drop different channels in different places across the network. So DWDM, although it's best known for point-to-point -point connections, in fact can do a lot more than that. It can do traffic distribution as well, and also emphasizing the point that those um, different types of channels can be com uh, carried completely independently of each other. <coughs> so this gives rise to the concept that we call virtual fiber. Because each color is independent and each color can carry any bitrate or service, and because each color can uh, travel between different locations, it means without the any ele electronics being involved, and we can now treat that as a virtual fiber where the light coming in here travels through the various prisms and comes out again. Light coming in here travels through the various prisms and then comes out again. And there, you would, on the end where these blobs are, you would attach your client equipment. So it means that the, a server or a, a routing device or a transponder, which is connected to, let's say, the yellow one, is going to come out on building E. But if you put it onto the red one, it will come out at building C. Or if you put it on um, the orange one, it'll come out at building B. So there we have it. Traffic distribution in the optical layer, that is within the fibre itself with no electronics being required. Something you wouldn't perhaps expect from DWDM. So, in summary, DWDM lights up fibre and turns it into a lease line style service, more of which on, an, on a separate session specifically on lease line versus DSL and so on, which you will find elsewhere. Um, it massively enhances the capacity of a single fibre, which uh, lots of people know, but it also enables different services to carry, be, be carried at the same time and between, between different places. Of course, it reduces the amount of cable and duct required, and it, because uh, there's, there's no electronics processing required it also reduces latency compared to other least line type solutions and more of that on another session as well. DWDM technology is small and compact and since it's largely passive it also significantly reduces power consumption compared to some of the alternatives like Ethernet switching or MPLS. So in conclusion DWDM is a means of leveraging the full capacity of fiber resulting in fewer fibers being required more capacity, of course, uh, lower latency due to those routing capabilities, smaller sizes of the equipment, and multiple independent services being carried at the same time. It's well known for high capacity on A to B connections, but it's also highly useful for high A to B to C to E to F or to Z multi-site distribution networks as well. It's a much better way to use fibre than a typical service provider lease line equipment. So you might ask yourself, why don't the service providers do this? Well, actually, the answer to that question is they do. Of course, not, uh, not that they tell you about that. They use that on their internal networks. And they don't actually sell those services, generally speaking, out into the market. You may sometimes come across this term alien wavelength but that's very much a niche case in uh, service provider land. So what I've been talking to you about here is what the service providers do for their own internal networks, and um, hopefully that will enable enterprises and smaller service providers to learn the tricks from the large service providers and do this stuff for themselves. So this has been Steve Pegram telling you about DWDM and fiber and how to use it. Uh, thanks for listening to this webcast. And I hope to see you on another session. For more details about Sorrento, please visit our website at sorrentonet.com or you can email me or sales at sorrentonet.com and Sorrento is part of the Comtech group based in Deeside, Wales and Belfast in Northern Ireland in the UK. So thanks for listening. See you another time.